Welcome once again to Heart of a Shepherd. My joy to come once again with our daily chronological study of the scriptures. Now, I do want to begin with an apology you can probably hear in my voice. I am uh, dealing with a cold and uh, desperately attempting to get over it. Uh, I came down with it yesterday, but uh, hopefully I'll be uh, healthy and ready for uh, ministry this Sunday. But let's continue in our devotional now that I've given an explanation for a lower voice. Well, 2 Kings chapter 2 is the daily devotional scripture. Now, I've titled this uh, particular study, Elijah's Rapture and Elisha's Promotion. Now, understand we're dealing with two prophets, Elijah the Elder Elisha the Younger. Elisha, we've already met him. He came on to the scene as really the assistant who would succeed Elijah in his great ministry. Well, we begin in verse 1 with the words, and it came to pass. And with those words, the last stage of the prophet Elijah's life began. Now, Elijah served a long and courageous ministry as God's prophet to Israel. Nevertheless, the day of his promotion came. For we read in verse 1, the Lord would take up Elijah into heaven by whirlwind that Elijah went with Elisha from Gilgal. Now, consider with me then Elijah's final journey, beginning in verse 2 through verse 9. And so Elisha, the man whom the Lord chose to succeed Elijah as his prophet to Israel, was with Elijah at Gilgal. And there the old prophet said to his protege, Tarry here, I pray thee, for the Lord hath sent me to Bethel. Verse 2. Well, Elisha, however, protested, and he said, As the Lord liveth, and as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. And so we read in verse 2, they went down to Bethel. Well, Elijah and Elisha then journeyed from Gilgal, the ancient place where Israel first encamped when they crossed the Jordan into the promised land, back at Joshua 5 and verse 9. And they came to Bethel, where Elijah was met by what is described as the sons or a company of the prophets in verse 3. Now, the prophets asked Elisha, the younger prophet, the younger protege of Elijah, Knowest thou that the Lord will take away thy master from thy head today, from being thy head? In other words, Elisha, you will no longer be the assistant to Elijah. Now, somehow these prophets knew that this was going to be uh, Elijah's promotion day. Well, Elisha acknowledged that he was aware the old prophet would soon depart, and perhaps with a heavy heart he answered in verse 3, Yea, I know it. Hold ye your peace. Well, departing Bethel, Elijah offered Elisha again to stay at Bethel. Still, the young prophet declared, As the Lord liveth and as the soul liveth, I will not leave thee. You find that in verse 4. And so we read, they came to Jericho. Well, arriving at Jericho, and I've been there, it's an ancient oasis in the desert, Elijah was met by a company of prophets who queried Elisha, Again, knowest thou that the Lord will take away thy master from thy head today? And he answered again, Yea, I know it. Hold ye your peace. Well, Elijah once again prevailed upon Elisha to stay. Stay at Jericho and said, For the Lord hath sent me to Jordan, that is to the Jordan River in verse 6. Again, Elisha would not remain behind, and he insisted on journeying with Elisha to the Jordan. Well, departing from Jericho, then the prophets of that town, we read, followed Elijah and Elisha from a distance. And they observed the waters of the river parted when Elijah struck the river with his mantle. Now, you realize if you've been following uh, this devotional, this is uh, the uh, second time that this has happened. The first time was with Joshua where he led Israel across the Jordan. Uh, now we come to Elijah parting the waters as well. Then notice, if you would, in chapter 2 again, in verse 9 and 10, Elisha's request. While we continue, then the two prophets, Elijah and Elisha, stood 
on the eastern shore of the Jordan River, having crossed over. And Elijah questioned his young protege, asking, what, uh, Ask what I shall do for thee before I be taken away from thee. Well, Elisha, knowing he would soon face the challenge of being the prophet to Israel without Elijah, he made a bold request, but an insightful request. And he said, in verse 9, I pray thee, let a double portion of thy spirit be upon me. Well, feeling the weight of his calling and the responsibility of facing a rebellious people without his mentor, Elisha's request for a double anointing of the Spirit's power was an acknowledgement that his task as the prophet to Israel now without Elijah was beyond his strength and ability. And so Elijah assured Elisha that should God allow him to see him taken up to heaven, his request for a double portion of his Elijah's spirit would be granted. Well, verses 11 through 13, we have the record of Elijah's glorious departure. And so the two men, Elijah and Elisha, continued their journey when suddenly that we read the heavens open and a chariot of fire and the horses of fire appeared. In verse 11, and Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven. Well, very picturesque, very symbolic. Uh, you and I really don't know anything more about how to interpret Elijah's departure other than what we read here. Well, uh, expressing his affection for Elijah, we read that Elisha cried out to the old prophet as he was taken away, my father, my father, the chariot of Israel and the horsemen thereof in verse 12. Then in an act of sorrow, we read in verse 13 that Elisha tore his clothes. And then, verse 13, he took up also the mantle of Elijah that fell from him. I invite you to consider with me in verses 14 through 25, three miracles that I believe were meant to confirm that God's anointing and Elisha's spirit were on Elisha, verses 14. Through 25. The first miracle is standing on the shore of the Jordan. Elisha took Elijah's mantle and he struck the waters and had Elijah. And we read and said, where is the Lord God of Elijah? Well, verse 14, immediately the waters parted and Elisha went to the other side. Well, the prophets that have been watching all this, having seen Elisha perform the same miracle as Elijah, exclaimed, the spirit of Elijah doth rest on Elisha. Well, then there were some men of Jericho that approached Elisha and they desired to look for Elijah's body. Suppose that the Lord might have taken him up only to do what? To cast him upon some mountain or into some valley. Verse 16. Perhaps they were thinking about how Moses was taken away. Of course, his body was never found either because the Lord buried that body. And so maybe these uh, prophets are thinking the same thing might have befallen Elijah. Well, Elisha at first denied their request, but they insisted. And finally, they went away for three days and they returned without Elijah's body. And then... Some of the men of Jericho came to Elisha, and we read that they contended that the city's water was bad and the ground infertile. Elisha then performed his second miracle, and he went to the spring that watered the oasis, and casting in salt, we read, the water was purified. The third miracle we find was a tragic one. For as Elisha approached Bethel, we read, young children came out of the city and they mocked him and they said unto him, go up, thou bald head, go up, thou bald head. Perhaps maybe thinking in the same manner that Elijah had been taken up into heaven. Well, we learned one of the things about Elisha was he was bald, according to verse 23. But Elisha rebuked the children in the name of the Lord. In verse 24, and we read, immediately there came forth two she-bears, two mother bears, out of the wood, and they tear 40 and two children of them. Now there's a lot of debate about Elisha losing his temper or whatever the case might be. I'm not gonna go into that. I'm just gonna read what the scripture says. 
and we'll take the interpretation from that. What we do know is that those 42 children had dishonored God's prophet. Well, the Lord left no doubt that Elisha was a man of God, and he sternly defended the honor of his prophet. We do not know the homes from which these children came, but they did not manifest a fear of the God of Israel, and they were guilty of taunting and scorning Elisha, his servant. Now, though tragic for the 42 children of Bethel, or Bethel as some would say to be struck down, it was nonetheless an act of justice, and the news spread throughout Israel. What was that news? There was a prophet in Israel, and his name was Elisha. Well, for the sake of application, let us be reminded that it is God's will that his servants, our faithful servants, should be honored and respected. In fact, Paul in his letter to Timothy wrote, Rebuke not an elder, but entreat him as a father. 1 Timothy chapter 5 and verse 1. And so let me close with this. Let no believer take lightly the consequences of failing to render honor to whom honor is due. Well, the 42 children in Bethel, Bethel suffered a horrible fate, for they had dishonored God's man. Well, thank you for being a part of Heart of a Shepherd. What a wonderful, picturesque moment we have in the scriptures here as now Elijah is taken away from the historical stage of the scripture. However, remember, we'll find him again in the New Testament when he and Moses appear to Christ on the Mount of Transfiguration. God bless you and bye-bye.